if you are having trouble installing CCPP IDE using the guide which involves installing WSL2 and Docker on Windows, then you are in the right place. In this video, you will see an alternative way to set up CCPP IDE. Just like many of you, I also faced some challenges while setting up the IDE, but I managed to configure my IDE environment thanks to my experience with both Type 1 and Type 2 hypervisors and some networking knowledge. So in this video, I will provide you my version of the solution to this problem. First of all, we need two things. One, VirtualBox application and two, Ubuntu Server Operating System. We use VirtualBox application to run our Ubuntu Server here. And then we will port forward ports from Ubuntu Server to the host machine. Let's get started. Let's install the VirtualBox. Yeah, VirtualBox.org. Okay. Click on download which will box and it will get to our download section. Okay, then on this platform packages, choose the respective platform. And for me, it is Windows, yours might be Mac OS or Linux or other platforms. It's up to your choice. Okay, the download has been completed. Now let's install it. Okay, okay, now the setup is ready. Now um, let's click on next to continue. I'm gonna click next. Now it's going to install some network interfaces. Let's install those as well. Click on yes and then install. Once it is done, I'm gonna click on finish. When it is checked, then automatically it will launch the virtual box. Okay, this is how you install virtual box. Okay, now let's download the Windows server. Type one two server available. Now you will be redirected to the page ubuntu.com slash download slash server. Accept uh, cookies, then click on this download Ubuntu server. Once you click on it, it will automatically uh, start downloading. If it does not start, then click on download. Then it will start download. Okay. I already have the files, so I am not downloading it now. Once downloaded, now let's run a Ubuntu server on a virtual machine using the virtual box. I am going to click on new and then I am going to name our server Ubuntu and I am going to change the location where the server is residing. Okay, It will be stored in the free and virtual versions. Okay. And I am going to click others. So that I can choose the ISO file that I want to use. So I'm gonna use the 22 version of the live server, then I'm gonna click open. Then I'm gonna click skip unattended installation, click next. If you choose 2 GP, you can use it, but I'm gonna for me I'm gonna do 4096, which is equivalent to 4 GP, and then I'm gonna give two CPUs, which is actually two cores. I have six cores, so I, I can give two cores, then click next. Then I'm gonna give 40 GB of storage. Then click next. So this is the summary of our virtual machine. The name is Ubuntu. It is located in this folder, and this is the image we are using. And it is a 64-bit operating system. Okay. Then we have 4 GB of RAM, two cores, and 40 GB of space. Then click on finish. Okay. Our VM is ready to be started. Now we can simply click on start. Okay, our VM is booting now. Uh, auto capture keyboard. So when you click on this, you can see this is a pop up. Click on capture. And now, if you change any, press anything, it will be sent to the visual machine. If I press up arrow and down arrow, you can see it is moving up and down. To release this, you can press right control, then the mouse will be uncaptured. Mouse and keyboard will be uncaptured. Okay. When you click on this, you can move up and down. So I'm gonna click back in and I'm gonna, it's gonna get captured. Press enter. Use up and down arrows to navigate up and down and press enter to choose the select your choice. So I'm gonna choose English and then I'm gonna continue without updating. Then I'm gonna click done because it is uh, layout is US. I don't want to change anything. If you want, you can select the layout you want. So US is fine for me and then click done. No changes here. You want to server? Click done. Okay, then done. 
and done and done click down arrow navigate to done and then press enter this is very important key navigate so, so here you can see it is only utilizing 19 gb of space out of 37 sorry 38 gb and 19 gb of space is left so it is free so it is unallocated so i'm gonna come here and then press enter the following options will appear navigate to edit now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna say here max 37 gb is uh, you can see on the left side so i'm gonna select 37.99 which is equal to 38 gb it is approximate okay then navigate to save and press enter there is no free space available unused space okay there is no unused space so we are reply we are going to utilize complete 38 gb space then navigate to done and then press enter it's a simple one no need to worry just continue now um, we'll give our name i'm gonna give my name as form and for the server name i'm gonna give demo click down arrow to navigate to username and then for the username i'm gonna give form and for the password whatever you confirm it by re-entering the password and confirm your password okay navigate to done and click done i want to install open ssh server so that i can navigate to this server using ssh so i'm gonna click on done i don't want to select anything if you want you can select spacebar and it will select if you spacebar if you press spacebar again it will deselect navigate to done and then press enter now the installation is starting it can usually take between 10 to 30 minutes depending on pc's performance right now it is downloading and installing security updates depending on your internet speed it might take around 10 to 30 minutes if you choose to not to update right now you can you can navigate to cancel update and reboot i'm gonna click cancel and i will reboot now you can simply wait for the updates to complete and then there is a reboot option will be there then if you click on reboot option we'll do perform the similar operation now it says Please remove expression media and press enter. You don't need to do it. Yes, press enter. Yes, press enter. Our vision successfully rebooted. Now, let's press enter. So, you can see there is a demo log. The demo means uh, our server name demo. It's actually asking for logging. Okay. I am going to press enter the user and now enter the username this one and password for the user then press enter now we are inside our ubuntu server once your ubuntu server is set up now let's install our id so go to this url and then click on ubuntu this section uh, these are the requirements system requirements we are utilizing the 4 gb of RAM and we have 20 of space the more projects, I mean, the more apps you are building, the more space it will take. So, make sure you have enough space, otherwise, you might uh, uh, find some errors. Okay, so click next. Then we're going to open our install machine. So, I'm going to click on the install machine and type the first command, which is sudo apt get update dash y ampersand ampersand sudo apt get install curl dash y you press enter we're going to ask us the password and we're going to enter the password for the user and now he's installing the curl package now the curl has been installed on our PC and now we're going to run the second command which is then which is curl space dash s small s then space http s assets dot ccpp dot in slash id slash ubuntu dash docker dash installation dot sh space pipe symbol and dash then press enter make sure there are no mistakes while typing this one and then press enter okay now this will install our docker and docker compose on our which one machine okay now the docker has been installed now let's restart our virtual machine to restart your virtual machine what you have to do is type sudo 
three two now. That's it. Now our virtual machine is rebooting now. Now let's log back into our virtual machine. Okay. Have the username and password then press enter. As you can see, the IP address is ten dot zero dot two dot fifty. This is very important. It might be different for you. Okay. Keep a note out of this. We need to use this one later. Now let's click on next here. And to start our ID, we're going to run this command. Now let's type here again. This cd tilde ccdp ID. Enter it. Ampersand ampersand. Docker dash compose. Press up dash d. Now it is going to download the ccdp ID. Okay. Now our ccdp ID is started. Now let me show you. Type HTTP slash slash localhost. Okay. Now you can see you might get this. This is because we are using virtual machine. So let's add port forwarding for this machine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go here. Make sure you select the virtual machine and then click settings. Okay. Once you click on that, go to network tab and the first advanced. I mean, first add after one, then click on advanced, and then click port. Make sure you are uh, selected NAT. It is by default. It is NAT. Don't change this one. Then click on port forward. Then click on add new port forwarding rule. Okay. You can change this rule. You can add this rule. Easy. You can say IDE for the host port. Enter one two seven dot zero dot zero dot one, and for the port. View port 80 and for the guest IP, give the IP address of our virtual machine. So let's go to the virtual machine. And if you have noted down the IP address of the virtual machine before, give that number. If you don't know what the virtual machine IP address, type IP space A. You can see 10.0.2.15 slash 24. Discord the dash slash 24. Just use the four numbers, which is double click here. And enter 10 dot for me it is uh, for me it is 10 dot 0 dot 2 dot 15 yours might be different so enter which are the IPv4 address that you are seen on your virtual machine for me it is 10 dot 0 dot 2 dot 15 okay then for the guest port which is port 80 okay then click OK then click OK again okay now our port forwarding has been now our port forwarding has been set up. Now if you reload this page now, you can see our IDE is working. Okay. Before we continue, we're going to need to add more port forwarding ports. We're going to go to network section and then advanced, then port forwarding. We're going to need to add several other ports as well. You can give na names for the port or you can leave this as is. For all the ports, the host IP is same, which is 127.0.1 and port, host port is different and host port and guest port has to be same for our purpose and for the guest IP, it is also same added the all the port forwarding ports that we needed so these are the all the ports that we need for our ID okay then once you've done adding the rules I mean the port forwarding rules you need all the ports here that is listed here okay then press ok then press ok now our ID is setup is complete okay now let's minimize this for a second then when you click on next here you can see it is uh, setting up a sample workspace before that we need to authenticate so i'm going to open the id sorry not id okay, i'm going to copy this and then i'm going to paste it here 
and then press enter okay our authentication is success then we're going to launch a sample product sample project okay then click copy this code now and we're going to paste it here and then press enter now it is setting up our sample project now go to the index.html and right click on it now open with live server on this section you can see server is started at port 5500 okay now what we can do is we wanna open a new tab and type localhost 5500 and then press enter now you can see our test project is running on port 5500 when you click off the uh, light is off and when you click on the light is on okay now I'm gonna tell you how to turn off the virtual machine okay now I opened this one now initially you can simply close this one when it shows this one uh, shows these options you can save this machine state and so on so but uh, if you want you can send a shutdown signal we don't want that but we are going to use this power off the machine click ok and that's it our ID is now down when you try to access this now you can see the site can't be reached and at the same time if you try to access this as well the id the same thing will happen so to restart the servers then simply open the virtual box then select this vm and then click start Our virtual mission is now starting. Now I'm gonna give a username and password and press enter. We're going to go back to this section and start ID. Keep a note out of this command. Okay. Now once your uh, virtual mission is started. Uh, you can say whenever you have something lines like this appeared you can simply type clear clear to clear the screen now enter the command to start this id which is cc sorry cd killer slash forward slash ccbp dash id space ampersand ampersand space docker space, dash compose space up space dash d small d okay and then press enter if you see ccpp id is up to date then it's no problem if you see ccpp id is started or created then also it is no problem okay now if you try to access it again okay now we are back to this right now the server is not working so if you try to access the post 5000 and it is still not reaching that because the server is not running so when you click on here right click here and open the live server then our server is going to start once this is started you can see here the port 5500 below that means our server is running when you try to access it now you can see our web page is loaded you can click off to off the bulb and on to on the bulb okay this is a sample project once this is done you can click here to stop the server now you can see the server is now offline so go back and try to exit now you can't reach this site okay this is how you should do it if you have any doubts queries then leave them in the comment section i'll try to answer them right there if majority have the same problem or something similar i'll try to make another video happy learning